The pink ribbon really is an extraordinary thing. The pink ribbon symbolizes hope. Power of community and collaboration. Strength. Education. Courage. Tenacity. Survivorship. Simplicity and the power that that can have. The second you see it, you know what that stands for. A breast cancer free world. I feel like it's a badge of honor. It is a ubiquitous sign now throughout the world to say we care about breast cancer and we care about you. Here we are, the mothers, the sisters, the daughters of women all over the country and all over the world, and nobody's speaking out. The more I learned about the lack of funding or how there was still a lot of work that needed to be done, uh, breast cancer became the cause. In 1992, Evelyn Lauder, who was my dear friend, called me. She had gone on the board of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and she became very knowledgeable about how rapidly research was advancing. And she called and she said, will you help me? Evelyn and I met because there was a concept of how breast cancer should be managed. She said, I have some ideas. I know you have ideas. Let's get together. So um, I came over to her house, and we sat at her kitchen table. Her concept and my concept was to build a facility around the patient. And this model has been replicated throughout the world for many diseases now. I told Evelyn that I would do three things for her. I would take the program internationally, it was funding domestically at the time, that I would raise a lot more money, and that I would produce an organization that was truly the gold standard. Evelyn asked me if I'd help her with a campaign she'd just started. And I said, of course, what is it? She explained to me about the Breast Cancer Campaign and the Breast Cancer Research Foundation that she very recently set up. She said to me that women all over the world were dying of breast cancer and nobody was talking about it. And she told me that she wanted to change that. Twice as many women were dying of breast cancer as those people who were dying of AIDS. And no one knew about breast cancer. Evelyn was one of the, the people who brought it out of the closet and allowed women to say breasts and breast health. It was a brave new world because this was a time where magazine covers didn't write the word breast cancer on the cover. There weren't big segments of new shows during October talking about breast cancer. It was her mission to create an engine to give women empowerment over their own health. I think my mother, when she was imagining the breast cancer campaign, absolutely had the vision of the impact we could have on breast cancer research, the treatment of breast cancer, and women's health. Since we started our efforts, the survival rate has gone from 75% to over 90%. The Estee Lauder Company started to give out these hand-tied pink ribbons, and you know, since that time, the Estee Lauder companies have given out more than 150 million of these free pink ribbons, and it really has become a symbol across the world. I said, what a fantastic idea. I want to take it and make it big. There's almost 200,000 names right here. We want to mobilize women. We're here to help in anything we can do. Today, the pink ribbon is a proud symbol of survivorship, and BCRF is proud to be an agent of more and more survivors every day. We stuck with it, and a small idea became an enormous idea. Evelyn and I used to do a lot of personal appearances. Maybe we'd do a West Coast tour, where we'd probably do five or six city stops. And I would be desperate to go to bed, because we'd always have to get up really early to do the breakfast show. So you start your hair and makeup at 4.30 a.m. Maybe you've only landed from the um, city before at midnight. She'd always be first up, last to go to bed, and saying, can we do more? What about putting in a cocktail party? Why don't we go and do this? We'd be like, Evelyn, slow down. And she'd say, never. When I was a college student, I ended up doing a uh, training program. And at the very beginning of uh, the summer, uh, the person who was running the program brought me in to see a patient who had a very large tumor. 
And he said, we're gonna treat this patient with a brand new drug called methotrexate. And over the summer, I saw that tumor just disappear. So I knew that I had to dedicate my life to using medicines to get rid of cancer. Larry Norton has a vision that is inspirational and he really lets us all understand that we have our own place in this research community. My goal is to determine a way to utilize the P53 pathway, a molecule that's connected to cancer as targeted treatments, and we're just getting so much closer. Our scientists don't compete with each other, they compete against cancer. There have been a number of different diseases which have been attacked and largely cured on a global basis. And there's no reason that we shouldn't have an imagination that we can accomplish the same thing with breast cancer. A decade ago, everyone was given the same prescription, the same toxic cocktail. Everyone got on the conveyor belt. And at the end of the conveyor belt, only some people were better. We understand now it's because that cocktail may have been only right for the tumor type in some of those women. There are many diseases, plural, where there used to be just one, breast cancer. And so exploring each of those threads, pursuing them so that we find the right therapy for each kind of cancer, expands the challenges ahead for all of us. One of the things we established when Evelyn passed away was something we call the Evelyn Water Founders Fund. And it's a $30 million global initiative to understand metastatic disease. That is a tumor that has sent stray cells elsewhere in the body. That's where the rubber hits the road. If you have a localized tumor, your life is not in danger. But what triggers certain tumors to have the ability to send cells elsewhere and often park themselves dormant for many, many years? What we need to do now is focus on the mechanisms of metastases and what separates those cells that are metastatic from those that don't become metastatic. If we can identify and deactivate that mechanism, we can change the future. I've met so many women over the years who've had breast cancer and who were fighting breast cancer. And of course, they're not all here today. They didn't all survive. But I think every single one of those women had a story and you don't really forget any of them. As a survivor, breast cancer awareness is very important to me. I think the more people talk about it, the more lives we save. I have had a close family friend whose mother and sister were both affected by it and seeing it spread so quickly, I think really is horrifying. When I was two years old, my mother was diagnosed for the first time. She found a lump that was like the size of a pea, and she went to her doctor. He was like, oh, it's probably not cancerous. We'll just kind of wait and see what happens. And in the next like week or two, it had grown from the size of a pea to the size of a walnut. So they did a mastectomy, and then one year later, it showed up in the other breast and uh, it was much worse this time. And uh, she had to go through chemo, and it was awful. <laughs> it's really hard to overcome the fear and the anxiety, and I think it doesn't go away. What she went through and having two small children while going through that, the fact that she's alive is incredible. When someone's affected by something like breast cancer, they need a lot of psychosocial support. Their families need support, um, and the support's ongoing. It's not just at diagnosis. What we see with breast cancer is that the impact's long and slow in terms of people's anxiety about it. Cancer can be lonely, and you need people to be with you. There are so many appointments that you have to go to, and having someone by your side is such a gift. Often when they're in the middle of very active treatment, they're getting a lot of support then, they're doing something about it. And it's often when the treatment finishes that the real trauma of having a diagnosis of breast cancer sets in. I'm inspired by other breast cancer patients and survivors by their strength, by their courage, and what they go through every day. If somebody you know has breast cancer, 
to be there and to find out how you can help, whether it's taking the kids to the park or buying the groceries, whatever it is, holding their hand during their treatment, there's always something you can do. It's really walking the walk instead of talking the talk. Like, really go and do something for them. Then, of course, it's the fundraising, because more results will be made faster the more money we have. You know, the cause is very potent. It matters to women. And I think we're further along with resolving breast cancer than many other cancers, because women have created a global force. We set a Guinness World Record for the most landmarks illuminated for cause in 24 hours. It was an amazing time. Evelyn Lord and I lit the Empire State Building pink as part of that. It looked just beautiful. I'll never forget that. One of the things that I've um, felt most sort of moved by is our pink ribbon walks. And that's where women who are affected by breast cancer come together and they walk in the English countryside and they look utterly amazing. There's a great stream of women looking like a pink ribbon. And, and it's just wonderful because they're coming together to offer each other mutual support. Evelyn once said to me, she said, I never put a copyright on the um, pink ribbon. I wanted it to be used and picked up by everybody. I've traveled to some places, not only in the West, where it is a little more delicate to sometimes start to open the conversation, but we've persevered and we've managed. And I think it's a very important part of our global program. Our relevance is greater by the day, our impact enormous, and it's a privilege to lead an organization that is really impacting the future for our mothers, our daughters, our sisters, our friends, and people around the globe. And we find more and more researchers on the front lines, unlocking the door, coming up with the answers. And we want to deploy those resources for the health and welfare of people. You know, there's so much that I'm proud of for the breast cancer campaign. First and foremost, the engagement of the thousands of employees who are part of the SD Lauder companies around the world. We've raised millions of dollars, and there has been material progress made. Going from awareness of what science can do to the funding of the science, the support of the science, the nurturing of the science, and that's profoundly exciting. I think we need to get out there and make sure that the world knows that the job's not done when it comes to breast cancer. My end goal is to determine a way to find those cells that have mutant P53 and to kill every single cell that has mutant P53. Eliminating breast cancer is a critically important thing that we have to do, but it's not the end of what we have to do, it's the beginning of what we have to do. Our end game is to put cancer out of business, to consign it to the history books. That's what Evelyn said. We will never stop, never slow down, never do anything but fight to cure this world of discouraged of breast cancer. Our mission is to create a breast cancer free world. No child will end up losing their mother and no mother will end up losing their daughter. That's what I want to see. I want to see a bunch of healthy people. I think the most rewarding part about being an advocate for breast cancer is seeing someone overcome and the joy it brings to themselves and their whole family. Every day we're making progress and it's very gratifying. The future is bright. Women are surviving and thriving.